Many people are concerned about what's happening with rising prices, and I want to give you some information that you need to know. The first thing we need to look at is oil forever high. Many in the financial industry are suggesting that this will be the case. The second thing I want to look at is the rate hikes. Interest rates are rising, and that could be very detrimental to the financial system. The third thing is the markets gone wild. I've got all of that and more. Let's begin. So let's take a trip down memory lane. BP CEO oil prices will stay lower for longer. This was back in 2015. I do think the industry needs to prepare for lower for longer. Fast forward to today, Goldman Sachs says oil prices could be much higher for much longer. And you could see that this has been not just the case, as they say here, not just a transient winter shock like it could be for gas. This is actually the beginning of a material repricing higher for oil. The fundamentals actually very much support the view of higher prices than we've seen pretty much since 2014. So this is what we are dealing with right now. Nobody knows what's going to come, but certainly at this time, we could see what we're dealing with. And that's what I report. I don't project into the future. I give you what we have today and you make those decisions for yourself. This is where we get into the important factors. Supply gap is looming in just a few years. Supply, on the other hand, looks constrained beyond the OPEC plus deal horizon. New investment last year slumped to a decade and a half low. Last year, global upstream investment sank to a 15-year low of $350 billion. So remember here, yes, there is OPEC plus, that's a fact. But what is happening all the way down the line? What are we dealing with here? They get into shale, they get into a lot of different topics in this oilprice.com report that I found to be very informative. Investment is not expected to materially pick up this year either, despite $80 oil. That's because super majors stick to capital discipline and pledge net zero emission targets, part of which some of them plan to reach by curbing investment and developments in non-core, little profitable new oil projects. You see what's happening there? So yes, there are some that are very profitable and that will continue to stream. But for the other ones where maybe it wasn't the best case scenario, well, they're just not going to touch it because of the regulations that have been put in place. U.S. shale, for, for its part, is not rushing this time to drill themselves into oblivion as American producers look to finally reward shareholders after years of plowing cash flows and drilling and chasing production growth. So they're not making that push either. Certainly, they're better off than they were last year, but it looks like you know they're not going for uh, the home run, essentially. Considering that oil demand was still grow, will still grow at least for a few more years, under investment in new supply would be a major problem in the medium and long term. That to me is massive. That's oil, one of the most important commodities in the world. But now coal, coal piles at 24-year low at U.S. utilities on demand surge. I've shown you this all throughout the world. China, other countries where there has been the surging demand because the others haven't been able to meet that demand. Miners can't keep up with the world's voracious appetite for coal, record natural gas prices, pushing power plants to switch fuel. It's a simple matter of fact, supply and demand fundamentals. On top of that, there are some other issues. There's some geopolitical, there's some potential nefarious act some say some people are suggesting that this is being done intentionally look i don't know all i can do is bring you what the data i have and you can you know use that to in order to build your case for what you believe is accurate australia's exports to china are jumping despite their trade fight this is coming as of october 27th and at the same time i saw information that suggested otherwise so i'm bringing it to you and i will dig in deeper from here 
the value of Australia's exports to China had jumped 24% from a year ago to reach over 180 billion Australian dollars. Tensions between the two countries deteriorated sharply last year after Australia supported a call to look into what China had been doing. Meat and live animal products are still holding steady and going to China despite the restrictions. So that is good for business. You could argue on the geopolitical, you know, the tensions and everything, but I do think that countries should be trading partners rather than being in some sort of battle. Everybody should be a winner, but that isn't the way it is, right? There's always one side trying to take from the other. China imported about 3.7 million tons of thermal coal from Russia in September. That's up 28% from August and more than 230, 230% higher than a year ago. Now think about that. You're talking about a magnification of the imports from Russia. These two countries are already you know, tied at the hip essentially, and now it's going even further. And of course, both countries like this arrangement. They like what's happening. And then we have this, speaking of Russia. Russia's Gazprom has emptied its gas storage facilities in Western Europe to unusually low levels ahead of the winter. And they get onto the fact that while European storage levels are low, an analysis of European gas industry data shows the largest shortfalls are at sites owned or controlled by Gazprom in what critics say that this is basically them trying to squeeze European energy supplies. That's what they're saying. I want to know what you think. If you watch this channel for a while, you know, I don't put my opinion into this. It slips out occasionally here and there, but I try not to put my opinion into these. Let me know down in the comments. And by the way, let me also know if you appreciate the fact that I give you the raw data. Hit that thumbs up button to support what I am doing here. It's quite different than many of the others. Some want to me to give a lot of opinions, but I've stuck true to this method here and I want to know what you think. If oil maintains these very high prices, then of course the economy will slow as a result. It is very important to hedge against inflation before it becomes impossible. You can't catch up to it if you start too late. Always remember to watch the central banks because they are going to give you the signals that you need to know. Now I've got a lot of information to cover. Let's break it down here starting with this. US merchandise trade gap widens to record as exports drop. Exports fall 4.7% from a record in August to $142 billion. This is important just to see it all happening before our very eyes. What's happening with the deficit? What's happening with the debt? And the US right now, in fact, every country right now needs those exports. They need people buying their stuff if it's made to be exported, of course. This is just showing you in a chart form. That's something that, you know, it could fluctuate. All of these statistics, never take it for just one stat, but just understand how it all plays into the grand scheme of things. Now, the central banks, real, real key to look at what they do globally, not just the one central bank. Don't look at just the Fed, though the Fed is obviously extremely important. Bank of Canada accelerates potential timing of rate hikes. Looney soars. Bonds hit hard on hawkish view from Macklem. Bank revises inflation outlook higher, but it says it's transitory. So of course, this is a that, that term there is, is being used all over the world today. We will be considering raising interest rates sooner than we previously thought. Interest rates don't need to be as low for as long to get that full recovery and get the inflation back. You see what's happening here? This is what I've been talking about all along and that they are finally starting to admit that their initial case wasn't what it was. They're playing it off as in, well, you know, that's what happened. That's what we're doing. But they are not factoring in their actions into all of this. Canadian dollar steep rally questioned as Fed meeting looms. So we will see what the reason I mentioned this here is that we are going to see what happens with the Federal Reserve. Uh, towards the end of this video, I'm going to be showing you what one of the governors from the Fed had to say about this. 
and let me give you a spoiler alert, he said specifically that they absolutely should begin the taper in November. They have a meeting in November, immediately begin the taper and start to immediately look at increasing interest rates. Says it's transitory, at the same time says it's not temporary, but you know how it goes. Brazil's biggest hike in two decades signals rate above 10% soon. Benchmark rate reaches 7.75%. This is important. My friends in Brazil, let me know how this affects you if it does. If anything happens with mortgage rates, with the amount of debt that people have. I need to know from you specifically. I know I have many subscribers in Brazil. I want to know what you're feeling. This, of course, why? It's being done to push inflation rates down. There is only one solution to higher inflation, and that's higher interest rates. That's why all central banks will have to do this. The only one in the world right now that is basically suggesting that, yes, inflation is much, much higher than where it should be, but we are not going to act. That's what it is. Then we turn the page. Congested Port of LA receiving empty containers from Gulf and Southeast. Carriers have requested up to 2,000 empties, which may impact delivery cadence. Now, looking at this here, the biggest hurdle we see in the market is the inability to return empty containers. This congests our carrier at the customer yards and adds to the chassis shortage. Ultimately, this can delay the ability to pick up imports due to the shortage in chassis available and yard space. This is one of the factors that I was talking about recently, and I know I've seen the comments from this before. So I'm glad that people are staying on this. And of course, when you mention it, I'm reading your comments, unlike other creators, I'm reading your comments and I am obviously pulling that in because I want to know what you're thinking, what's on your mind, and then I put that together. This is important because that container crunch is big. It's a big part of this. One thing U.S. consumers won't be given thanks for on Turkey Day this year. Turkey Day, by the way, that's what they're calling it apparently. The higher cost of food and just about everything else amid sharply rising inflation. When you go to the grocery store, everything feels more expensive because it is. Food prices are up 3.7% apparently. Uh, and then they basically say it's going to cost about 4% to 5% higher than it did last year. You can let me know. We'll, we'll do a talk about that after Thanksgiving and we'll see what happens. This is just showing you the U.S. Treasury 5 and the 30 yield spread and a very, very important one. This came down. If you look at what happened in 2018, going to very, very low uh, levels, and I thought this was important during that time because why? They were increasing interest rates. So the market is reacting according to this just as it did in 2018. It's already pricing that in. I'm going to bring you some details more on that in the coming days, okay? Instead of lending U.S. banks or buying treasuries, that's important as well. If you look at what's happening right now, what is the, the financial system worried about? They're saying everything's safe and sound. Why not lend? Why buy those treasuries? That's a question. The Federal Reserve, the governor of the Fed, okay, one of the governors had a long speech at Stanford, and this is part of it, okay? The moral of this little example is that one needs to be careful when selectively ignoring data series. Check this out. Be it used car prices, food and energy prices, or household surveys of inflation expectations, all of these series convey important information about the evolution of inflation, and one should exhibit caution in dismissing data as outliers. Food and energy. Oh, we got to get rid of those volatile food and energy from the calculation, right? He's actually saying that. Well, he'll probably lose his job now, but anyway, I'm bringing it to you while it's still up on their website, directly from the federalreserve.gov, by the way. We must keep our eyes open to the inflationary pressures wherever they come from with consistency and rigor and stand ready to adjust policy if we conclude that such change is warranted. And basically saying, November timeframe, we got to get that taper happening. We got to increase interest rates as soon as possible because this inflation, while it is transitory, it's not temporary. Let's act. 
that's coming directly from the Fed. I want to know what you think about that. Will we see interest rates increasing in 2022? Let me know in the comments below. If you appreciated this information, hit that like. Why? Because it supports the channel and it helps to make sure that these end up in your feed. If you're wondering why these don't end up in your feed, you got to be signed in. You got to hit that thumbs up and you got to click that little subscribe and the bell, the bell and make sure it says notify me every time. If you haven't seen this video yet, you've got to take a look. Lots of detail, lots of stuff in here. Click it and I'll see you there.